Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, I just wanna say welcome. We've had a big jump in subscribers on my channel over the last couple of weeks and I just wanna say welcome. I'm super thankful for all of you guys hitting that red subscribe button down there. Seeing that number grow is really reassuring to me that some of the information I'm giving you guys is helpful and it also motivates me to keep continuing on um, giving you guys information and so I just want to say thank you and if you're new welcome if you haven't already subscribed I would love to have you be a part of this community on my channel where I'm talking about homeschooling I'm talking about mom life and I'm talking about fitness that is what you will mostly hear about on this channel. So today's video is going to be another Q&A, mostly on homeschooling, some fitnessy stuff thrown in there, also some little life stuff thrown in there, um, but it's gonna be another Q&A. I haven't done one in about three months, and so I thought it was time to do it. I uh, posted this on my other social media accounts, mainly Instagram, so if you're not following me on Instagram, I will leave a link to um, that down in the description box for you so that the next time I do a Q&A you can leave me your question about anything on Instagram or also today down in the comments below you can leave me a question there so I don't want to make the intro too long so I'm just gonna get right into it I did pull all of these questions off of my Instagram account like I said so I am answering let's see one two three four and five I'm answering five questions they're kind of longer and I just wrote them down um, on on a sheet of paper and I uh, left it filed away so that today my answers are pretty authentic. I haven't like combed over these types of questions. This is like off the cuff, a super relaxed style video. So my first question that I got um, for this Q&A um, was from someone named Kelly and she asked, do I like sunlight? What are the pros and cons? And she also asked me to post, um, I previously posted in another video, one of my favorite tortilla soup recipes, and there's, it calls for something called homemade dry ranch. Um, and so I will leave a link down to that for you, Kelly. But to answer your question, do I like sunlight? Pros and cons. Um, so yes, I do like sunlight. I am not uh, unhappy with it. It is working okay for us. Um, now, the reason why I'm not saying like I love it yet is because I just feel like, and it could be the, um, the time span of history we're studying, it is not overly exciting, which I know sounds really bad. Um, so some of the read alouds that we're doing as a family, which reading is a huge part of sunlight, the books are not like super captivating to my kids. And I understand it's important to expose them to all kinds of literature, which is why I'm continuing on with it. I, um, there are certain things that they are really enjoying, but there are certain books that they're just really not that into. And so... Um, the pros would definitely be the um, instructor's guide having all those days and page numbers already mapped out for you. Now for me, that is just like a guide. It doesn't dictate me like where I feel like I have to do what it says, but it provides some framework so that I don't get too far ahead or, or too far behind. I like having the schedule. So that is a big pro with sunlight. Um, another pro with sunlight is that God is referenced all throughout it that's a huge pro for me and my family and then the other pro that I would say for sunlight for me is having all of my materials already with me like I have all the books I need for the whole entire year and I'm not out looking for new ones or needing to buy them as we go and another pro is that the core which I did another video on so if you don't know what I'm talking about you might go watch that I'll leave a link down below um, another pro is that it covers all of my kids' age ranges right now. Now next year, I don't see it working well for us, um, but I'll do another video on that. Um, but this year, so we're doing it, we're enjoying it. Um, there, Some of the books my kids are just not that into, but we read them anyway because, um, you know, I just want to 
read what we're supposed to read and kids in public school aren't gonna like everything they're reading anyway so we just read them and we take away what we can from them but there are things they really do enjoy so I like it um, I'm the thing that sunlight is lacking for me personally is like I uh, think that my kids would really enjoy like project-based um, like they're project-based learners like they want to dive all in and they want to like really get into it and um, there's not a lot of like extra stuff that I can find to pull for what we're studying now like a part of our history that we already did was like knights and castles and there was a ton of stuff on that and my kids loved that part but another part like our geography part is a book called window on the world and it's just like a brief reading over these different areas in the world and I know that my kids really are not retaining a lot from that but I'm keeping reading it because just them realizing that it is um that there is other people in the world is important. So um, those are the pros. So those are my pros and cons, Kelly. That's kind of where I'm at with sunlight currently. Maybe by the end of the year it will change. We like it. I still give it a thumbs up, although I feel like there could be more. I don't know sounds kind of weird. Maybe I'm in the middle. Um, okay, so my next question was from Jessica. She wanted details on sunlight and she also asked, how do I handle the pressure of seeing different sides of family around the holidays? Um, so I kind of just gave some, um, some information already on sunlight as far as like details of it go. Um, we went with it because I wanted all my stuff to arrive. I wanted a core curriculum that covered my three um, school-aged kids. Um, I wanted Christian-based curriculum. I wanted um, I wanted literature-based curriculum. Um, those are really the reasons why I went with Sunlight. And so it is a, a great curriculum. So. Uh, I'm not really sure like what more details you would like. Maybe you can let me know down below. Um, or maybe I already answered it when I answered Kelly's question. But um, sunlight is working really well. I would recommend it. I think uh, different times of history are engaging to certain kids and not so interesting to other kids. And I think maybe we just happened to fall on one of the less interesting time periods. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, to answer your question about the families, that is such a good question. And that is something that is like super hard for any uh, family to juggle, especially when you uh, maybe have divided families. Like my family, um, you know, there are, uh, like my parents are divorced, my husband's parents are divorced. And so there are, you know, two, on each side essentially and then you add in like step parents family and then suddenly you've got like six families to visit um, through the holidays and so the pressure I used to really feel and it was really taking a lot of joy out of my own holiday with my family unit because I was so worried about like seeing everyone and when we when our kids were really little we would like drive around to several different houses in the same day with all of our babies when they were four under four in tow and it was not fun for anyone me or them and so thankfully now um, our families do earlier celebrations so like one night we'll celebrate with my husband's dad and that um, group of the family and then another night we'll celebrate with my husband's mom and his sisters and so everyone kind of celebrates a little bit early and has their own day and everyone for the most part is pretty understanding um, as far as time goes but I would say the biggest thing is is to not be afraid about celebrating early or celebrating later because it really is just spending time together that's important not necessarily on the on the holiday because on the actual holiday of Christmas uh, we really just like to stay home and enjoy that and let our kids play with their new items and not feel rushed and really just take it all in so that would be my tip 
um, for you to juggle that is just, you know, um, plan things early and later so no one is getting missed out on and then take the holiday to just be with your family unit, like your husband and your kids. That's what we do. Um, Charlene asked me, a really good question and I think she got it from my day in the life video actually I know she got it from my day in the life video um, asking do I work on only one subject for school for a certain amount of time and what would I do if one of my kids was taking longer on that subject than I wanted them to would I just move on how do I do it so she got this question from my day in the life video I will link that for you too um, I get my kids book work which to me, book work is like seated, sitting down work um, done in usually two, two and a half hours. And so I think that's where she got this question from. So to answer your question, I do one lesson of each subject per day. So for example, like with our math program, uh, we use Horizons Math and it is broken down by lesson number. So they do one lesson each day. Um, at the beginning of the school year, I looked through all of our curriculum and I verified that doing one lesson per day would uh, essentially arrive us on completion all around the same time. So that's what we do. Now, um, on a case-by-case -case basis, it hasn't happened yet, but say my kid was having a really, really bad day and they were just not willing to work and this would be like an isolated day because that would really not fly in my house. Um, there would be consequences for choosing to not do our work, um, but say like they got sick or something and then they missed a few days. Well, they would have no problem like adding that on to the end because I buffered us with time. But in general, we do one lesson per day of each of our subjects. Now, I don't set a time frame on them. So uh, it's just how fast they get through it. Now, they're, I, they don't rush, but on average, we're done about two, two and a half hours. Now, there have been days which I don't document on my day in the life video videos where we've sat there for much longer than two and a half hours. Actually, they've sat there because once I've explained something and they understand it, I, um, you know, I don't want to always have to be sitting there hovering them, my older two. I think that part of the benefit of homeschooling is that they learn to be self-motivated learners and they're able to focus and stay on task and complete their work. So I give them as long as they need to complete that lesson. The average time span it takes them to get through all of their subjects is about two to two and a half hours. But if it took them a whole hour to get through math that day, then that's what it took them. And thankfully with homeschooling, we can do that. That is a huge plus. And it has happened. It just doesn't happen all the time. So that's kind of how I handle um how I handled that. And then as far as like the list of the subjects that they work on, like I said, I structure their lit, their work from the like the easiest completion to the most difficult. So my kids always work on math as their last independent subject and they start with like their journal and handwriting and spelling and reading and then language arts because that's kind of like a progression into a more difficult subject for them. So that's the way I do it. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, the, the next question I got was from Marilyn. It was wanting to know the differences between Sunlight and Bookshark. Um, and she was asking specifically about um, the Christian stance on the, some of the material that Sunlight provides and things like that. So Marilyn, I actually do not know anything about Bookshark and I would love to know if this is something I'm missing out on. Please tell me you guys about Bookshark in the comments because I don't know anything about it. So I can't compare that for you. I think that Bookshark, and maybe I'm wrong, is like um, you don't keep the books. Maybe it's like a rental. I'm not sure. Sunlight, if you purchase it, it's yours to keep and then you can resell it. And generally, Sunlight resells very easily and I plan to do that with our curriculum. So I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question, but I would love to know what Bookshark is um, down below. As far as the content on Sunlight and it opening up good conversation and exposing them to other worldviews and religions and all of that, I think Sunlight does an A-plus job on that. Every 
portion of our read alouds, every portion of our history, every portion of any book that Sunlight has provided as far as subject matter um, for my kids nine, eight, six, and just turned five, I feel is very appropriate. Um, Sunlight also does, they, are, they don't take a stance like creation or this, they just give the information um, and there are things like in our science curriculum that talks about evolution, which most Christians are creation based um, thinkers and believe that that way. And that's definitely where I fall. But it's important for our kids to know that there is this theory that exists and kind of where it originates from. And so it does open up that uh, conversation so that your kids just don't think that there is just one way they are learning about other things. The book I mentioned already in the window on the world talks about other world religions. It talks about, uh, it talks about all of them essentially and what parts of the country are predominantly those types of religions, which I think is very valuable information. So I think that Sunlight does an amazing job on that and that is part of why I went with them because I didn't have to worry about the content. Now she also asked, are there like projects and relatable things on Pinterest and stuff like that. Now I have found some things, but like I said, there's not a ton. Now, if you're a really creative mommy, you could probably come up with some really good stuff like cooking foods from that area or, you know, whatever, making some of the clothing garments that they make in different parts and so on and so forth. Um, but that would of course take time. And so I have not done a ton of that. Like I said, for the Knights and Castles um, portion, we did do a lot of stuff with that. Um, so I think there are quite a few projects, but you would have to have some mind power in there too. They're not like all done for you and you do have to kind of look for them. And then the last question I got um, was also on my Instagram. She, I think, is a follower that has a shop. And so her, uh, her name on Instagram is not like Jennifer, it's a name of a store, so I won't repeat it. But uh, she asked, where do I get my energy from? And uh, you know, how do I get through all I need to get through in a day because it looks pretty tiring? And um, so that question is super sweet and um, I just wanna say, like, I think that there are people that are just really high functioning people, like people who genuinely just get a lot done in a day. And then for other people, it's more difficult to get a lot done in the day. And I also think that it depends on what stage of life you're in with your kids. If I had a newborn or a baby, there probably would be no way that I would be able to do as much as I'm doing as far as like work life and my own fitness life and homeschooling. But because my kids are all all at a age where we're beyond naps and all that stuff, I am able to utilize my time well. Um, and so I think that that's a part of it. Um, my energy just comes from myself. <laughs> I'm like a high energy person and I have to have a lot of things to do. Otherwise I get bored. Like I need, I want to be doing things. Um, but there are times where I do get tired. I, uh, I do not film myself when I'm having a rough day. Uh, so you guys don't see that side of me, but I definitely do not, you know, feel like a rock star every single day. There are really hard days in there. And she asked like, what do I do to refuel myself? Um, and so my, my things like that I hold on to that give me energy and refuel me and, uh, give me you know, uh, set my mind right to be able to do all the stuff I need to do is obviously reading my Bible, spending time in the word and prayer um, just helps me so much. But I also do really think it's so important to get time by yourself every once in a while. Um, I can feel it when I have not been alone for, you know, a few weeks and it doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes I just need to be by myself. And so I try to get alone time. I don't always orchestrate this huge extravagant, like mom's day out type thing. If it just means like leaving my home and not talking to anyone for a few hours, sometimes that's what I need to do. Um, 
I also try to go out with my friends, you know, on a semi-regular basis. Just having adult girl time is very re-energizing for me. Um, same thing with my husband. We try to get date nights in when we can. And then the last thing that really gives me a lot of energy, and I know some of you out there are going to like cringe when you hear this, but working out scientifically gives you more energy. Once you get past the difficulty of getting to the gym or turning on your DVD or whatever it is you do, you will have more energy. It is science. It gives you endorphins. It makes you happier. It makes you feel better. And I am telling you, that I could not homeschool my children if I did not work out every day. Like it is a very, very important piece of my sanity. And I, some days I do not feel like I have the energy to work out, but I go because I have to either teach or I have a client or I just make myself go on the days where I don't really feel like it. And I always feel so much better when I'm done. So I just wanna encourage you um, who left me this question and also any of you out there who are watching it, like I promise you guys, you are not beyond science. If you work out, you will have so much more energy and you will just feel happier. So I hope that answers some of your guys' questions before. Like I said at the beginning of this video, please let me know in the comments below if you have any further questions. And as always, please give this video a thumbs up so I know that what I'm giving you guys is um, being watched and being enjoyed. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.